So the last talk of the afternoon uh, is uh, Pierre Van Hope, and his title is Fine Intervals and Your Symmetry. Yes. Thank you very much for doing this very nice uh, program and conference. And uh, so I'm going to talk about some, some work that I've done with Spencer, Matt, Karen, and some work in progress with Chad Doran and uh, Andre uh, Mosensev about uh, understanding the Feynman intervals. But as you may have guessed, for most of the examples that we work about, uh, the sunset group and the free loop one. Okay? So, uh, but I want to just uh, put some definitions here. Yeah, that, uh, okay, so this is my Feynman integrals. I mean, I don't remember if somebody has ever given a definition of it, but since I'm not going to do much of it, but anyway. So the notation is I gamma, gamma is the graph, so Feynman integrals from the graph gamma. And uh, in a standard Feynman representation, I mean, <laughs> so this is the propagators that are quadratic forms. QIs are linear uh, in the external momenta. So the, 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 the data that comes, the Feynman integral is a function of what I call the kinematic data. Kinematic data are the product of the external momenta, PIPJ. The internal masses, that comes here in the denominators. And here there is some set of indices, mu, mu1 to mu n, that are here, and you will see why I need this mu. And this is the dimension of space time. And the Feynman integral has a standard number of vertices, number of edges, and the number of vertices minus the number of edges plus the number of loops is one. This is the other characteristic of the graph. And the graph you integrate over as many loop moments as there are cycles in your graph, on the homology of the graph. And so this is the, the generic formula, and you want to understand what is this object. Is there some inequality between the number of pjs and the dimension? Uh, this v, e, and d? No, 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 no. no. But then I don't one. understand why is this a function of s at all? The internet of of g's. Yeah, no, but the s are only the scalar products. Yes. And in general, even if you have something that's orthog invariant of the orthogonal group, Yes. It's not everything is just a function of the, of the grand matrix. Ah, okay, yes. It's okay. not true. So I mean, in this sub-dimension is smaller than some other dimension. So, I mean, so that's why I'm asking. Yeah, yeah, I mean, I mean the point is that I can have as many number of external legs. This is the, the number of uh, external PJ that I have. And indeed, I mean, if you, if you want to look at uh, Number of independent kinematical invariant, you have to ask the question of the QC of the number of. So that's the is, is, is VE very small? Or is no, 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 no. VE can be even the other side. It can be the other side. It can be the other side. But anyway, let, let me focus on that. Yeah, just have one. So this is the sunset. It's a two loop one, so I integrate over two L1, L2 in D dimensions. My propagator are the quadratic form. L L1 square minus N square plus epsilon to tell you how you have to go on the poles. Mm -hmm. There's only one, one external momentum, so there's only one P square. And, and, and the, the momentum consumption of the vertices tells me that actually there's only uh, L1 plus L3 plus L3 is P, so I could have written um, sorry for L3, for example, but yes, yeah, so, um, symmetric formula. So, and this is the formula why I have 1, 1, 1, because all the, this, 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 this is the power 1 of the propagators. But suppose I take a derivative respect to, for example, one of these mass parameters, what, uh, what will happen is that you will get this guy square. Okay, so you see why there's a 2 here, and you can denote it with a dot here. So if you differentiate respect to n2, you will get a dot here and a 2 here. And if you differentiate with n3, you get a 2 here and a dot here. Okay, and you can differentiate as much as one. Okay, so this is the, uh, some notation. And if it happens that there is a missing propagator, that means you have collapsed an edge. Then that means there is a zero somewhere. So for some reason, I have collapsed uh, actually one, one of these. So I'm missing one propagator. So this is the L1 integral, L2 integral. Actually, it's a factorized integral, as you can see here. And the graph shows you this, and, and the notation has a zero here. OK? Why do I'm saying that? I'm saying that, that because 
if you work out, so if you try to understand what is the, the, the variation of this integral with respect to p square, for example, you differentiate respect to p square to p square, the integral here, which is the one you want, uh, the sunset, which is oh, sorry, the sunset or sunrise that you want to evaluate, then that will generate something that will change the integral. And you can massage it, but then what you find is that you, you can write a, a system like that. It was actually based on what we call integration by part identities, that essentially was invented by um, Laporta, and, and then used in this paper to show that actually all these integrals that are presented to you, you can have a uh, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. It's a, it's a big matrix, I mean, it's a vector here. Yeah? D by dp squared is a certain matrix times the vector, so the mass, okay? And this matrix here yeah, satisfies this flatness condition. So what I'm saying is that this is generic. I mean, well, you, man, you can always do that. And this is what essentially brute force computation gives you. What I can do is that I, what I want is that I, I can rewrite, of course, the system in this way. A system that is the derivative of this four vector. This matrix will be four by four. Then I'm getting the same guy again, plus okay, another matrix times this radius graph. Okay? So this is here yeah, the minimal okay. So the version that I want to, to consider. So once you have this, what you can do is that it's, a, it's a simple exercise in linear algebra to obtain what is a, a differential operator on P square that acts only on this first line of square. Okay? This is 4 by 4, so what you will find is that there is a fourth order differential operator that acts on your sunset integrals. Okay? That is a consequence of this linear uh, algebra matrix. But what you realize is that actually this fourth order differential operator is factorizable. So it's not a minimal one. You can factorize two first order uh, differential operators with respect to p square, and actually it leaves you the second order differential, the minimal operator that you find that acts on your, actually all the entries of this vector is second order. So this is the, so there is a second order, this is the minimal order, Peter Fuchs operator that acts on each of these um, integrals. I will give the Peter Fuchs operator in a minute, but because the system is inhomogen, each of the integrals are not killed by the Peter Fuchs operator. There is an inhomogeneous term. So in a sense, I mean, you have already, uh, I mean, shown in previous talk that this integral is given by some uh, elliptic polylogs. So essentially, the fact that it's an elliptic d log is because there is some uh, geometry behind that that we discussed that is an elliptic curve. So if you knew already that there is an elliptic curve, and actually this, this is the, 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 that this integral is a period, I would say, a mixed period of this elliptic curve, then of course you expect that is a second order of the because you have an elliptic curve. But the thing that is tricky is that when I go to free loop, so I mean the statement about being an elliptic curve doesn't change if I value the internal masses. But at free loop, you will see the rank of the Picard Fuchs operator will change. At free loop, that will be a K3, and the, the, the Picard number will change with the masses. And this is the interesting part of the talk. So, in a sense, I mean, uh, once you have the system which can be brute force established by integration by part identity, then uh, UNSN wrote some very nice paper saying that, okay, if you, if, if you can put this matrix in a nice form, diagonalize it in a nice form, then you get multiple polylogs, okay? Because it's actually the standard way you get multiple polylogs because you can exponentiate this, this, uh, this expression and then write it. But what, what happens when you go beyond multiple polylogs? Okay, so what, what happens is that you can convert the previous expression into what is called the standard uh, parametric representation, where you have here the Zimanzig polynomial, the first and the second Zimanzig polynomial. So u depends only on the vacuum graph. So, okay, so nu is, I'm sorry, nu is the sum of the new i's, and the new i's are the same as the one I had before, the powers of the propagators. D is the dimension of space time, <coughs> L is the loop order, and phi, the graph polynomial phi, is this uh, Zimanzig polynomial times the, the sum of the mass e squared times the xi, xi are my Feynman parameters, plus something that is quadratic in the uh, PIPJ, PIPJ in the external states. 
In, in the previous example, you had 2, 1, 1 for you knew. Yes. In that case, the gamma function has, is gamma of 0, isn't it? No, it's a d. No, it's a d. d is 4. Yeah, no, 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 no,
So, so I have my homogeneous polynomial in uh, Pn minus 1 in some conditions. So I have the space of the weight of the monomials, right? And so I define the lattice, which is the, this uh, okay, so the lattice where that is defined from the weight you know, that I have you know, in my uh, monomials. So the, from the, 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 this data, I can construct this differential operator due to, uh, actually, I mean, I don't know why I don't have the name here, uh, from the Gelfand, Zelensky, and Kapranov, that there is a set of differential operators. So, so this lattice has a certain rank. I mean, so there is, so you can you just, yeah, you, have a, you can compute what is the, 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 the rank of that lattice. And then from that, you associate a differential operator that is uh, constructed by derivative, by the derivative with respect to the coefficient that you have here in your polynomials. To, so you put here the positive, when, when you have a vector L that has positive entries, the, so the entries are integers. So these integers can be positive or negative. So here you, 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 you write with derivative to the powers of the positive integer minus the derivative of so if the Li is negative, minus Li is positive, so that, that makes sense as a yeah. derivative form. On the left you have Z1 to ZR, and yes. on the right you have Z with a multi-index. So what, what's, what's Z with the multi-index? Ah, I'm sorry, Z with the multi-index is this, I'm sorry. Uh, sure. Is it a variable or it's oh, the it's variable. It's the variable. No, 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 so this is, yes, I should have uh, repeated the multi-index. So, so it's a function of the Z? It's a function of the coefficient that are here. Yeah. <coughs> okay. So these guys, oh, okay. I'm sorry, these guys are that guy. I should have used the multi index notation. Mm -hmm. or I should have changed my notation because, I mean, actually, I remember that the formula looked very complete, too clumsy. Okay, no. So the point is that, um, so this is what I said at the beginning, because the, the graph polynomial, the Zimonzik polynomial, is linear in the internal masses and the, the, the external kinematics. These z are linear, so this is exactly a differential equation that mixes the relative respect to the mass and the relative respect to the external moment power. Okay, so in a sense, I mean, this is something that uh, the GZK approach tells you that it's natural to consider. I mean, as we know in physics, when we work out these IDPs, is that when you look, if you look to try to differentiate with respect to the external moment. Uh, you will have at some point to raise the power of the internal propagator, which means very little with respect to the internal masses as well. So, in fact, you have to think about the space of running everything internal masses and external momenta. Okay? And there's a set of linear operators, and among these guys, there is, for example, the LR um, operator that tells you about this uh, the degree of homogeneity that acts, that will act on what? So, actually, uh, GZK. Show that here there's a function with the weight over the torus, modulus of the zeta equal 1, of the product of polynomials of the type I've written here to some power m i's, and here the x i to the beta i. Okay? So if I want to make the contact with the previous notation, I should have mu i here, okay? and typically I would have just two polynomials here. I mean, I'd have to just the, only the, the, the second dimension contains the kinematical variable, so that would be the powers. I mean, and this is a which are the powers of the inverse power of the second dimensional polynomial. Yeah. But just can tell you that the generic solution to so I'm sorry. So what happens ah, yes, what happens is that these functions are killed by all the operators I described before. Okay? So uh, so a generic solution to this um, system I, I, I obtained before is an hypergeometric functions. That is given by uh, so the, the zi's that are the coefficient of my uh, homogeneous polynomial, the gamma functions, and here there are some complex numbers, gamma i, that you can choose in order to, to define your, your uh, class of hypergeometric functions. Okay? So if you use that, then of course you can of course make a theory and understand the, the standard hypergeometric functions, the F21s and things like that. There's some very nice lecture by uh, by uh, Jan Stienstra on applying these sort of things. But okay. So the problem is that this is very nice because in a sense, I mean, it gives you a, a, a way to get some differential operator easily that acts on some period intervals. Okay, I'm going to come to my period intervals in a minute. But in a sense, I mean, this approach for me is close to essentially what you get if you use IDP. We get some big system that will act naturally on the finite intervals. 
But of course, it's reducible. I mean, everybody that has worked on neural symmetry knows that uh, then you have to study the factorization of this operator to get down to the pika fuchs operators. But anyway. So the thing that is extremely interesting for me is that is the following. So the, the, the special case of, for example, this integral that is one over my uh, homogeneous polynomial that will, for example, be my graph polynomial integrated like that, so new, uh, yeah, it depends the way I write it, um, integrated over the torus is has a particular physical significance in quantum field theory. So, I did not explain to you how to go from that integral to the parametric representation, okay? But you see, the, the Feynman integral is you integrate something over the positive quadrants, okay? So positive variables. There is a notion, what we call in, in um, so the imaginary part, the parenthesis is missing here, the imaginary part of your integral, which is the maximal cut, is actually replacing all the one over propagators by fun delta functions. Okay? So if you work out the exercise that leads from the Feynman, uh, the Feynman integral to the parametric representation, you see that essentially by using the Fourier representation of this delta function of exponential 2i, okay, the, the Fourier representation of the delta function, you end up the same integrand, but now you've changed the domain of integration. It's just the torus. So that means the maximal cut is precisely a period that is killed by the Joseph And it's one of the side geometric functions of Joseph K. So you need to cut all the lines. Cut all the lines. All of them. Yes. And that for us, for the sunset, will be the, I will, I will show you this is the period that is analytic at p squared for infinity and generates the appearing numbers. But anyway. So in a sense, what happens is that you know that the maximal cut of your Feynman graphs is killed by your set of differential operators. So now you can use that to determine the picard fuchs operator. Okay? So you, you have a period, and you can ask, okay, you know you have a period. <coughs> your period, you know, is given by this hypergeometric function. Okay? So now you, that means by using this, you have a function, and you can ask yourself, what is the minimal differential operator that solves, that annihilates that function? Okay? So, in, in a lot of cases, that turns to be a simple way to determine the, the picard fuchs operator, much simpler than doing it by over method. Okay. Okay. So now the thing is that. Uh, so let's go back to my. Go back a second. Sorry. You would the Im imaginary part of something is defined to be the central. Surely the imaginary part of the fundamental exists anyway. It's a. It's a. It's a. It's a theorem. Oh, sorry, it's a it's a theorem. That it's a theorem. It's a theorem. Yeah. I'm sorry, yes. <coughs> I should have no doubt, yes. yes. The imaginary part of this is this, yes, that, okay. and then this is that. Okay. Well, the, you're taking the maximal cut. Yeah, I'm taking the maximal for, cut. For the sunrise diagrams, the maximal cut gives you the imaginary part. Yes, well. that's right, yes. But, but for the generic graph, the maximal cut. Well, okay, I'm sorry. This is the maximal cut I want to mean, yeah. yeah. Oh, I'm sorry. It's, it's, very, it's very specific to the yeah, sunrise yeah. diagram. The sunrise the is the imaginary part. part. The maximal cut is the discontinuity is across discontinuity. the country. Koski says yes. when you cut all of the yes. lines, you cut the continuity point. across the cut. Well, anyway, so the maximal cut <laughs> is this. Anyway, I'm sorry, I, I should have cut, but cut. Yeah. Anyway. So the thing is that what I want to study is the, the integral where the, the domain of integration is the positive quadrant, not just the, the torus. So as we, I mean, as was uh, first, I think. Anyway, I know. I mean, yeah, I got this idea. I mean, I learned it from the paper by uh, Spencer, uh, Elenio, and Kramer. That actually, you have to, to think about these things being in uh, so that this integral is a period of. Uh, so, if you think that the integrand is the top form in, in this in the projective space minus the locus where you have the poles. That, so the domain of integration, of course, is not a, a proper cycle there. So for the sunset, what you have is that the domain of integration, because it's x1, x2, x3, the three, the three <coughs> edges. So normally that gives you you know, a triangle that is the domain of integration. The the, the graph polynomial defined the, the the curve defined by the graph polynomial is an empty curve that has the unfortunate behavior of going through the um, the corner of the, of the domain of integration. So you have, what you have to do is that you have to, to do some blow up 
put some meters to block points. So you, you put your some meters here, and then you get an hexagon. Okay? And, and, and now what, what happens is that you have to define, you have to think about this integral in the blow up. So that means in that picture where you have put some little epsilons at the, uh, at the corner of your uh, domain of integration. For the case of the sunset or the sunrise, or the sunrise, this is easy because you just have to blow up points. Okay? So when you have become more complicated, you have to face uh, edge, facings, and can be very complicated. But what I want to tell you is that here from the tree angle after the block, you get an hexagon. And the hexagon is exactly the uh, Newton point of, of the of the graph polynomials. Okay, so you have the graph polynomial and it was this uh, homogeneous polynomial and the graph. So this is what the, the toric geometry sees the hexagon. Okay? So in a sense you can do that with sage, meter to sage and okay. So the statement is that actually the, the Feynman integral is a period of this uh, <coughs> motif, which is this uh, relative cohomology with the block. So because it's a relative cohomology, as I said, <coughs> the Feynman integral is not going to be killed by the picard fuchs operator. There will be an inhomogeneous time. And we know it as an inhomogeneous time. This is the reduced topology that we get when we do the integration by part identities. So, so, as I said, I mean, there is one, the maximal cut, so when you cut all the lines, you, you get a way to, to, if you take the maximal cut, you kill the, the, the reduced topology because by definition. So you get a solution to picard fuchs equals zero. But what the real meat is really having a non-zero uh, inhomogeneous time, that means a non-zero expansion. <coughs> okay, so... This is why I got my typo because I got it from here. So indeed, for the for the sense that this imaginary path is cutting all the lines. Okay, so so I'm repeating what I said. So the, the integral over the torus for the sunset is really cutting the lines. It's the imaginary path in that case. It's a true statement of uh, the integral. So which is this? Of course, there is another uh, cut. There is another cut which gives you. Um, so there's another period that is that has a log. So I'm sorry. Uh, that S is 1 over P square, okay, from the menu that you will see. There's another period that is, uh, that is a log B again, okay? Right. So there, there's another way to cut lines that gives you another period. But I, know I only need one to, de to determine the picard force operator. So for the sunset integrals, this cut, this maximal cut, pi 0 of P square, has the very nice expansion not near p square equals zero. So it would, as a physicist, you would like to expand when p square equals zero, but actually it turns that it's better to expand when p square equals infinity, actually because the, 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 the system of differential equation has maximum unipotent monogamy there, and especially because what happens in, in, the, in the expansion because of the structure of the graph polynomial are the, well, if all the mass are one, this is the appearing number, and this is the generalized appearing number. So now if you go to, if you add more lines, so all these banana graphs, you just extend the sum, and so you, this is all this class of appearing, generalized appearing numbers that you get. So the period, this period that is analytic when p squared equals infinity is super nice for all the banana graphs, so that means you can use it to determine the picard force operator in a cheap way. But it's still some work to, to do it, but anyway, so you can determine it. So if you do that, then, of course, then you get the, um, the, the picard fuchs from the sunset, that is the second order that you expect. But then, if you, uh, you, when all the mass are the same, you can do it for all, um, sun, for all sunset graph to a loop order, and then you realize that the order of the picard fuchs operator is the loop order, when all the mass are the same. But, for example, at free loop, when the, the uh, so this is a bit complicated to read, when all the mass are the same, the picard fuchs operator is order 3. When there are two different masses under 4, three different masses under 5, and um, four different masses under 6. I mean, I, I will comment later on, on, on why this is a K3, but actually the, the, the geometry defined by the graph polynomial at free loop is a, is a, is a K3 surface. So that means the picard rank is changing when I am changing internal masses. So this is why I said it's extremely important to understand what happens when you vary the mass. And so the so it goes from the picard rank 19, which is the case that we where we form the elliptic free log with Matt and, and Spencer, 
But then it goes up to uh, rank 16 when all the four masses are found. Okay. You defined the pickup flux by blowing up in some yes. way. Yes. But when you have, <coughs> that, that depends on some generosi generosity of the momentum. When you set the masses equal, you completely change the geometry. Yes. You have to completely redo the blow -ups. Yes. Yes. So is that what, what, okay. what so, you're saying? So this, this is, is the pickup flux with that particular strata. No, 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 no. So, so this is the, the, point, the point actually is. Um, <coughs> So let me take the, so, so torically, so, so suppose I think in a toric way, yeah. before I respect to, to the special specialization of the Z, I will see a picard number 11, okay? But now what happens is that if you read, so there is a, the, the, this, this picard number 19 was in the paper by Elena Verdil about the Atari number, and she, she computes the, 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 the transformatal lattice. But she shows that actually there are 20 curves, and the, the rank, the intersection matrix of these 20 cards uh, is 16. So in a sense, what you can show is that I can follow, actually, oh, what happens is that when the four masses, when the four masses are different, the 20 cards are there, and when the masses are becoming um, equal, then you can see that there are lines, and they contribute to the intersection matrix, and this is the, the, the goes there. And this is essentially working out, uh, de filling out details in, 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 in a very nice paper by Elena Vail, and this can be done in Sage, and this is where Andre, actually we are uh, modifying the toric package in Sage, with E is modifying the toric package in Sage, <coughs> in order to, to, to implement that computation in systematically. Anyway, but so, so what I said, in here, I mean, the geometry is changing. But, but this, is, this is why, I mean, it's actually this kind of geometric transition that we are seeing here. But the right hand turn is going to change completely. Well, of course, yeah. but you can follow that. I mean, sure. the point is that, well, at some point, you have, you have to understand how to, 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 to parameterize the moduli space of this polar and scale free. And so, Chuck with Andre and Klinger, I mean, and his collaborators uh, studied these cases, and this case is not completely. So, so we, have to work, we have to really do the work on the one and system. But anyway. In this case, is the k free surface that you get is always of the Kummer type? Uh, Yes, yes, yes. I'm guessing that from Picard. Yes, yes, I mean, Nikon, I mean, it's a, you can find, you can use Nikon's result to, I mean, see that it's open? Yeah, yes. So, uh, so the differential equation. So the differential equation is that, uh, I don't know why I have gamma here. Yeah? Mm -hmm. So my picard fuchs operator that I've constructed for my uh, analytic period, uh, he acts on my uh, Feynman integral, so he acts in the integrand, but as usual, you are in cohomology, so it's not killing it, but it's modulo in the exact form. And then, because my domain has a boundary, it's non zero, and this is the origin of the source term. So, for the, for the case of the sense, uh, sunset graph, what you find is that you find two contributions one contribution that contains the log of the masses, okay, and one contribution that is a rational function of p square and the masses, okay? And uh, so this is the, and, and what happens for all the banana graphs, what you get is that you get these powers of logs, okay? So uh, let's see, now let me, let me go back a little bit. So, uh, I don't think I wrote the formula, yes. Okay, so if you evaluate that guy in d dimensions, essentially, so the, everything factorizes, and if you have the n banana, uh, uh, n sunset graph, you will have, uh, Certain number of flux here, so they are just powers of the of the masses to the to, to the dimension of space. So when we go in d equal two, actually um, the uh, the finite part contains actually product of logs of the masses. So you really see that the log, the what I'm getting in this uh, in the source term is really coming from this radius topology. So there is a one to one correspondence, and it's uh, it's kind of, it's nice to see that it works. I mean, although it's not. Uh, it was not completely reduced to us. But the thing is that in a completely abstract way, uh, you can construct all the ingredients that are here without referring to these uh, physics considerations. So using some work by uh, Muller, Star, and Angel, and, and some, some work by Chuck and Matt, that you know that actually the, the, the piece that I call Y theta is actually a Yukawa coupling that is completely different from, so this is the, the form that I, that I obtained from this, uh, this is the integral of my Feynman integral, so that contains my Zeeman Z polynomial, and this is the first derivative with respect to, uh, to the P square, or S equal 1 over P square, and you get that expression. So that means this part is part of the connection that you naturally have in your, um, you know, 
convention of our structure. Or if you want, another way to say it is that this piece of the inhomogeneous term is the Gronskian associated with this period that you have for your elliptic curve. So this is the, the period of your sunset elliptic curve. Okay. So that's the easy way. Yeah. The other term that is the log term, which I mean I have motivated from these reduced topologies and, 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 and feminine consideration, you can see it as well uh, from the, the geometry of your um, uh, so the, this is the hexagon, so that means the domain of the equation after blood. This is the elliptic curve. And the elliptic curve actually intersects my uh, domain of integration at six points. So there is three points where uh, that are 1, 0, 0, 0, 1, 0, 0, 0, 1. And there are points that are called Qs that involve, that have negative coordinates, minus m1 square, m2 square, and so on. So they are not inside the domain of integration, but nevertheless they are there. They are my elliptic curve. Between the point P1 and Q1, it's a divisor, uh, it's a divisor, uh, a two torsion divisor. Between P2 and Q2, it's a two torsion divisor. And between P3 and Q3, it's a two torsion divisor on my elliptic curve. When all the mass are the same, they all, they all become, uh, the point become all of order 6. This is why it's the number 1, 6. But still, that means that this uh, log dependence, so on, on my, so uh, if you, this is the log of the parameters that are in historic data are given by the circulation of your uh, integrand between this, this point, Q1 and Q2, okay, differentiated with respect to that. So there's a completely geometric problem. Excuse me, Pierre, there's also the very uh, special property, absolutely necessary here, that the sum of the three CIs is equal to zero. Otherwise, you wouldn't know what scale to put in your logarithm. That, but here, when you see it as a sum of three cycles, maybe you understand why that was. That, that's exactly an extremely important uh, remark, by, uh, because it's, it's going, I mean, it's more important even at iron because you can have a product of the logs, so this, this, the, the independence yes. of the scale in the logs is extremely important. Right? But indeed, I mean, you only have uh, two independent CIs because the sum of the CIs is zero, because of, as David said, I mean, you, if you, if you um, uh, of course, I mean, uh, I should divide by mu square to make everything dimensional. But then you can check on that formula that indeed is a closed path and this is closed and this is when you solve it. Okay, so as an elliptic delog, so let me again recall, so this is my sunset integral, this is the differential, the differential form in two dimensions, but then this way, okay. So it's cubic, it's clearly an elliptic curve, and when the ma all the mass are the same, actually it's, it turns to be a modular curve that is of type x16. Okay. So what happens is that the sunset integral will be something. So if you if you divide your Feynman integrals by a period, so this is a period. So this is what I I mean this one is not exactly the pi zero. So I mean it sounds I mean you can use different periods. But anyway, so for some reason when we wrote it this way we didn't use the same pi zero, the pi zero will come in another expression. So your Feynman integral is it's not the elliptic delog. It's an elliptic delog times the, the period of your elliptic curve. And I think uh, Stefan called it psi 1 or psi 2 for the term of Anyway, so there's one of the psi used by Stefan or Christian. So it's, it's always the case. So your, your, Feynman, your Feynman integral divided by the period of your geometry, your period, is going to be something, your regulator integral. So L2 uh, essentially the, your regulator and X1 and X2 are the coordinates on your elliptic curve. And actually what, 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 what happens is that your Feynman integral computes the regulator period in the K2 of the elliptic curve. Okay? So at the free loop, you are going to the free the elliptic free loop, you compute the K3 of the K3. Okay. So, uh, and that, that is, uh, that is essentially, and uh, you can check that the, the symbol are telling uh, everything works on. Okay? So the point is that if you, if you look at another example, for example, the, the two bubble box that some physicists looked at, well, you, you, can, you could be worried about this, uh, this condition. And so that you could be worried about how to, how to define the regulator in that case. But in most of the cases, again, it works fine. So, but I don't want to make any, any general statement about generic Feynman graph because I don't have any statement. Okay, so how does the, the elliptic delog comes out? 
So I told you, so there are all these, uh, yes, I mean, so you should have put that slide. So all the, the, the special points on the curve are these P's and the Q's. And when I look at the uh, multiplicative representation of the magnetic curve, the, 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 the map of this point into that model is such that uh, x1, x, x of q1, x of q1 is minus 1. That means there is the, 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 the divisor connecting the two is two portion, it's a star. So you your coordinate x over z as a function of little x on your elliptic curve. Actually, it's very natural to represent it as propagators. <laughs> I mean, in a sense, what you would do is string phase. So you will look at objects that are naturally defined on the elliptic curve, that is a theta function, so the theta 1 function, that I will cover the definition here. Evaluate such that it vanishes, so, so the, the, this function vanishes when you are at x1 as a pole at p1, vanishes <coughs> at p3 and as a pole at q3. And y, z, uh, pole and zero are that. I know you can uh, argue from the um, motivic consideration that actually I mean, the regulator is the integral of the log of this object, d log y. But now, as amazing as it is, I don't know if you have ever done that computation, but the log of the theta function, okay, so the log, I mean, is the log of this, so you can expand, okay, but clearly the log of this function with the sum gives you Li1 of Qs, okay, and the constant contains the, the zero mode part, yeah, okay, d log x, but clearly the integral of Li1 Q to dx d log x is Li2, right? And this one is a right, so I mean, and, and this one gives a, gives a log. I mean, I mean, this is completely trivial, but I mean, this is the most natural way I can see the utility log coming out. Yeah, in this uh, sunset graph. So this is, so that means the sunset integral is this period times this E2 functions, which is exactly uh, of that form. So this is the, so you see, it's the sum of Q to the N X minus Q to the n divided by x, so that uh, this this is uh, translation invariant on my um, uh, elliptic curve. Okay, it's a well-defined function, and I don't have the problem of convergence. I don't, you know, in a sense, I, I could try to rewrite as a sum over z, as used in the paper by uh, uh, Francis and Andre Levin. But but you know, you need to uh, to make sure that it converges. So you have this u factor that I don't like. So this actually, what comes naturally is this convergent expression. Mm -hmm. And of course, the expression here, I write it mod period, that means modulo period of the elliptic curve. <coughs> so essentially, uh, it doesn't mean that I don't know what it is. I mean, I, we know what it is because what you do is that it's a very simple computation. So you have this, and a priori, uh, you, you have two periods on your elliptic curve, so a priori, you have two coefficients to fix. But the Feynman integral that p square equals zero is completely finite, and one of the periods is regular, the other one has a log singularity, the log the log p square. So you know the coefficient of this one is dead. I mean, you, you, you have to kill it, and then you can fix the other coefficient. So in a sense, with one data, you fix one, you fix everything. And at free loop, it's the same. So at free loop, you have, you have three constant <coughs> fix, but there's one period regular at zero, and two are blocked behavior, you kill them, and then you fix one constant. So in this, this definition of the sum, uh, you've got to be careful, because d2 is a multivalued function. Mm -hmm. And q to the nx and q to the n over x are going to travel around on all sorts of different branches. Yes. So you have to say something about how, what the meaning of the sum is. Uh, okay, so the point is that, uh, that's a good question. Uh, um, well, I mean, the sum, some of the thing has been studied, I mean, well, the point is that on the real axis, when uh, I am below the branch, okay, so... Excuse uh, me? This just I. In the, if you, if you, uh, the, uh, the no, no, x is, uh, so when the mass are the same, here yeah, this is uh, the six root of unity that come here. Yeah, well, but so in no, general, this is the complicated function, function of the mass is on this one. So the point is that... Um, in, in general, it's a, an incomplete elliptic integral of the, uh, of the first kind, because those numbers. Yes, yes, yes. So uh, the thing is that for the for the uh, anti continuation, so the point is that on the real axis, I mean I, I know what it is. So below the threshold, <coughs> there's another expression in terms of integral of the cell function, 
And so I, I, you, I know that on, on that part, the, the two definitions match united. In the paper, I will give uh, tables of numbers. So this is, so the, 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 the determination of the Li2 that we use here is such that it matches on the physical region that is below the pressure. Okay. Uh, um, <coughs> So another way to think about it is the case, in the case when, for example, since we heard about Ashland integrals. So in the, in the all equal mass case, when this is the, the X16 uh, modular curves, actually the sunset integrals is, again, period of the elliptic curve, the, the curve, times this Ashland integral. So you have N, an Ashland series, weight free, with a character that is a, that is a character mode 6, going from the lattice of the elliptic curve to um, S1. And then you, here you have the pairing, because you, have comp you are computing the period, so the period is a, is, a, is a differential form and a cycle, so you have to, to make it a number, so this way. And then you integrate from, I'm sorry, uh, the notation is bad, but uh, I integrate from tau to high infinity, so essentially as what was done before. So in a sense, I mean, in that case, when all the mass are the same, this is a very nice hash integral of that sort, which is, which is quite cool. And which, again, you can understand through, uh, as a regulator map. So again, what, so what I want to stress here is that uh, it's, not a, it's not projecting on single values. Mm -hmm. It's not single values. Because mm -hmm. actually, when t or p squared varies, you need to have a multi-value function. So you don't have the single value projection that you normally can find in Denison uh, or Spencer work I mean, usually. And that's an important part of cosmic field uh, amplitude. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I don't know why I have twice the same. Uh, ah, yes, I don't know, I see. So, so yeah, this is, this is the expression when I write ex exactly the, from 2 to infinity. So, yes. And then if you perform the, the integral, and then you find this. The sum, and square. Okay. So, in a sense, you can check whether it's real or not on the real axis, uh, so, and, and where on, what are the properties of this function. So, here is the, uh, the free loop. Uh, Sunset. So uh, I could not find any nice picture of a free loop sunset. This is the sunset in Siberia, and because of the ice in the air, you have reflection of the sun. Ah, it's good. It's good. It's good. It's good. So, so this, 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 this free loop guy has, uh, so the, the graph polynomial is this. Uh, so, okay. so this is linear and the mass, and it's still one variable. Okay. And uh, so when all the mass are the same, this is what I said, it's a K-free surface with uh, a Fioda uh, structure that is gamma 1, 6 plus 3. So I mean, I don't know if I plug is here. So what I'm telling you is that if you use the right up model, which is for gamma 1, 6, yeah, I'm telling you exactly how you should parameterize your uh, flow computation you should discover by the method you described in your talk. That is an elliptic free log that I'm going to present. Okay? Anyway. So the Peter Fuchs operator in that case takes that form. For the when the mass of the form, I cannot try the, the, the Peter Fuchs operator because it's so it's very long. I, I know it. And what we found is that again the 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 the, the free loop sunset is the period of the K3 times the Li3 guys. Again, because all the mass are the same, the the, 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 the point where we evaluate. On, on your, uh, you have <coughs> your elliptic free log are six root of unities, and uh, this is this expression that is Li free plus with the plus. Okay, so don't you know that very well because I learned that from you. That there is this sign that changes when you go from odd to even, and then there is the Bernoulli polynomial type of. Uh, 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 okay. So what I'm saying is that this expression appeared in these papers. Okay, but. We actually did the competition and then we discovered that it matched. Okay, so it's it's pretty amazing that this quantum field theory competition on the nose selects exactly what the, what was known in mathematics. Okay, so now what what I want? What, I mean, this is very nice. I mean, all this elliptic two lot we have the elliptic three lot, elliptic two lot. But okay, let me look at this formula for example. Right now. I'm sorry for. Yes. So this formula is <coughs> Q. And here is the map of the points on the elliptical. So there are very complicated functions of my physical parameters. 
So in a sense, what I, if I vary P, if I vary the mass, I have to recompute the lytic curve, I have to compute the hot mode, I mean, to compute tau, Q, and this is not very interesting, I mean, in terms of if I want to study what happens when the masses are changing. So, of course, in, in the sunset case, nothing dramatic happens because it's always a lytic curve, but at higher loop, I mean, it's important, as I told you. So, there's another expansion of the elliptic, uh, the, the sunset, that is, this pi zero, that is the nice analytic function when p squared goes to infinity, times some object that is the log of the masses, yeah? So it's cubic in the log, quadratic in the log, linear in the logs, and here some li3. And the reason is that if you look at the, uh, essentially you have four killer parameters. So, in a sense, the, you have to think that the elliptic d log, or elliptic free log, is using the complex structure, and this is exhibiting the, the killer structure. And here, there is zeta free because this is the, the traditional uh, um, one that you get from by computing Van uh, Gogh-Witten prepotential, and the claim by actually there, is a, there was a conjecture by uh, Chuck Doran and, and, and Matke that actually these intervals compute the local Van Gogh-Witten prepotentials for some Calabio that I'm going to describe. Did you explain because in the previous slide you had the radiator, yes, which is the single value version yes. of the problem, and now you. have this is the alternating between multi-value stuff and regulators. No, no, my so it's, it's, not not it's, it's not single value. It's not single value. So there's an Eisenstein symbol, but nothing is single value there. I mean, uh, but then you have the regulator on the next slide. What do you do? Yeah, yes, but the regulator again is not a single value projection. I mean, you never need you never need a single value. So maybe the name of regulator is maybe not uh, a good name. I don't know yeah, my function. Mean the regulator is the you just call it the real regulator. It's a real regulator. So maybe the math calls that, I mean, prefers higher normal functions. Yeah, and so if you make a, a rational regulator, it will be multi valued. Yes, it's a multi valued regulator. Mm -hmm. so that's ah, okay, okay. So that's not my story. I'm if I'm not precise. So the point is that what's happening is that if you, if these guys are the Taylor parameters. So from the toy geometry, it's more that you want to go to the other side. So, the, so essentially, if you think that the elliptic polyol is the B model version, so the A model version is going to be an expression like that. This conjecture by uh, Ken, Matt and, 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 and Chuck uh, is actually we have verified it for the sunset, but I think it's true for all the banana graph to the group orders. But indeed, you, you lose uh, you lose uh, the elliptic polyogs, but you have the famous Li3 that comes as usual. Don't compute the the uh, uh, invariant, and then you have the beta's and the homology of that. So I'm going to explain this. So this is sunset, this is sunrise, so this is my version of neural symmetry. So, okay, so now I'm repeating what I said. So the sunset integral is this period that is analytic at infinity. R0 is the, actually the logarithmic Mellor measure. Okay, so that means that the, 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 the derivative of R0 gives me my analytic period. And what happens is that my sunset integral is actually R0 cube plus this guy, yeah, so you see all the masses are explicit, and, I, and I'm telling you, I can do the same for all banana, for all sunset graph, exponential to R0, and here there is a sum over L, and here there are some numbers. And what happens is that we con by, by brute force computation, you, dis I mean, you take the integral, you massage it, there's no thinking going into that. You find that actually these numbers are rational numbers we tabulate in the paper, and then you find that they satisfy this multi covering uh, formula, which is that we are uh, a local Gromov-Witten uh, invariant of uh, degree zero, I mean, uh, degree L rational curves, genus zero, degree L. <coughs> I have no idea how to get genus one Gromov-Witten invariant from quantum field theory, but anyway, this is what comes out of this. So if you have all equal mass case, you can even work out precisely the definition between the big Q, which is the, the exponential of the logarithmic uh, measure, and the little Q that I use for my elliptic d log. Actually, this is just uh, from adapting something that I found in some paper by uh, Jan Stienstra. And then you can extract these numbers, and so there are these rational numbers. They alternate. You can check that the growth, the synthetic growth is exactly what you need. Everything works. So now, what is going on? So actually, uh, when should we finish? Uh, well, the cake will arrive in five minutes. So okay, so <laughs> I, I'm with that. So this is <laughs> tonight, so I, I'm finally I can make it. So what, what's happening is the following. So, 
So there is no interest in mirror symmetry for the elliptic term. I mean, for, the, for just an elliptic term, mirror symmetry is just the tidal it's, it's not that. You will not get this. So what, what, what actually the insight of uh, Doran and Kerr is that you, you take this, the graph polynomial of your sunset graphs, you add these two UV uh, complex variables, and you make it a non-compact Calabio. So actually, it's a local Oriva freefold for the case of the sunset. And, and essentially, what you do is that you are just computing the local gamma of Newton prepotential for this for the for, for this family of elliptically fiber freefold. And, and the statement of proving actually the statement that I, I showed previously is to go from the uh, you know from the A model to the B model and just essentially to look at the relation between the cohomology here to the to the even I mean uh, quantum cohomology on the A model side. So essentially, what happens now it's very clear. So you, you have your here yeah, you have the Calabio freefold. So you talk to Albrecht Klemm, okay. I, 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 we should have done that before, but we did that after that. Mm -hmm. But uh, but Albrecht was actually kind enough, so we had many discussions, and that's something it converged to the following fact: is that in reading his paper that Albrecht wrote, he uh, so the so the the, the I told you the sunset. The Newton polytope is an hexagon, so you people who know the the Pezzo surface will certainly recognize the, the DP6. So this is the base of the Calabio free fold. So he has computed the the, the, the local prepotential for this uh, uh, Calabio free fold based on the DP6. So there is an expression here that is very explicit, all this number explicit, and the map between the Keller parameter that is using and my variables is given. Here. You plug that in. And you exactly get what, uh, what we're computing from the Feynman intervals. And that works like a charm. Where, where in your definition of variables is the external energy? I, I, I can't Oh, I'm well, sorry. Okay, so yeah, you see, yeah, that's a good question. Yes, yes, okay. very good. So this is the, here yeah, are the masses that yes. you see explicitly. Yes. Yes. But, uh, okay. yes, so yeah, I've been a bit too fast. So, so uh, k square or is here. Yeah. So the kinematics, that's here. Yeah. The kinematical variable s or p square is in fine. Yeah, so where is it on the final transparency? Ah, okay. So in the final transparency, it is in what I call uh, Q. So this guy Q. Uh, yeah. Yeah, is it is it algebraic. Or, or yeah, yeah. So I'm uh, sorry. QI is m i squared times exponential r zero, and r zero contains s in here. Ah, so it's in there in a yes, very yes. very <laughs> yes. manipulated form. No, no. The point is that. Um, you have to think that okay, you, you have the mass and the p square yes. in your coefficient of your uh, zematic polynomial, but you know it's homogeneous, you can yes, always yes, yes. look at p, uh, n, n divided by p square. Yes, yes. So, in a sense, I mean, only the masses are really important. Okay, so this is what I'm, you know, you can rescale it in a way. But the thing is that the way it comes in this q and q is exponential r0 and r0 depends on s through that. It depends on the, on the mass. You know. So if you use that map, you plug in that expression by Andresh, and then you get exactly the expansion of the sunset. So then the other thing I said about the fact that my inhomogeneous term in my picker fuchs operator, one piece was this Yukawa coupling, of course, this Yukawa coupling for the sunset is descends from the Yukawa coupling on my Calabio freefold. So normally on the Calabio freefold, you have three derivatives of the Keller parameters. It's non compact to project on the base, and, and then you select just two, and that gives that on the nose. So in a sense, everything I said before, this sounds directly from this structure. So clearly, you can go to the next reporter. The K3, you add, you get a Calabio 4, and you scan the, the papers by Ambrecht, and you find that actually just, I mean, the, the former space is not treated. I mean, you, okay, anyway. It, 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 essentially, the, all, all the equal mass case is treated. So when I, but essentially, the machine is there. So if you have a, a colleague that, he, that, is, that knows how to compute on discrete potential, then you are done. Mm -hmm. So in a sense, what I'm saying is that I'm not focused anymore, because at some point, I mean, since the geometry of the elliptic curve disappears, elliptic polygons is not going to survive. But certainly, this thing is going to survive. So at least for the class of the sunset graph, the fact that the sunset integral computes the prepotential for the local gram of return invariant, I think, is true. To all order, it's a conjecture, but it's true. Phys but physical uh, reasoning. And essentially, what you do is that you just increase here you know, the rank of the allies when you go up in loops. So this is what are all the bananas. And this is the end for the paper.
So as you said, I mean, normally uh, this local bundle of things that are related to string thing, there's no a single string thing in this in what I've done. But at the end, you get something that <laughs> comes from string thing. Mm -hmm. So in a sense, I mean, the question of how is it related to string thing would be: Is there a way I can generate from quantum field for a genus one or higher genus bundle of things? Because string thing is it for topological recursion? So uh, that I have no idea. And I think maybe this is where you see the difference between this quantum field theory approach and the string theory But being able to be the origin is more than that. I mean, I'm still thinking about that, I'm not yet decided. Any other questions? Yeah. Uh, the question is, what was happening with the break routine? 